Next up on the number one tee. Well, hello and welcome back to your digital tea time. My name is Tori and I am your host. And today is a special day because not only do we have Leslie Rangel joining us, the icon, but we have Kimberly Eaton back on mic. Hi, ladies. How are you? Hi, Tori. I'm great. <laughs> Leslie, it's been a minute since you've been on the hot mic. So are you feeling a little nervous? Are, are you able to relax knowing Kim and I are here to, you know, make you laugh? Yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right into it. So today the topic is going to be like, okay, so you're running a member guest. What is the outline of, you know, uh, making the event special? How, what things you have to go through, all of that, all the details. But first we need to check in on everyone's golf game. So Kim, why don't you go first? What's going on with your golf game? Last time you were on, you were on a break. You were on a friendly break with your golf relationship. So. I still am on that break um, until March. Um, I'm still working out. Yeah, how's um, that going? It's going good, I'm getting stronger. Yeah. Um, I'm not stretching anymore just because the cost is killing me, man. Oh, like you were going to like a stretch out. I was going to stretch. It's called stretch zone mm -hmm. in Mesa, you know, and it's just, it's between the two of them, the exercise coach and the stretch zone. It was like $700 a month. Yeah. And that's a little, when you're on a fixed income. Yeah. And I'm sure a stretch, you can find something. I could online. probably stretch at home if I could just get flipping motivated uh, so you're just golfing with pat or well yeah in, in club stuff yeah no no tournaments yet not till march not until march is gold rush gonna be your first time back your first tournament um, back? unless i happen to slip into dc slip into the dc yes gold <laughs> rush will be my first time back kim kim is our uh very late cancellation shoe in if we get if we get a cancellation you know so come minute. on all you low handicappers one of you cancel out no just kidding <laughs> she's not kidding <laughs> that's okay we love her for it leslie what's going on with your golf game ah uh, today i can say i'm a perfect 10 you are you're a 10.0 yes, 10 yes. It's well, my favorite so good for you is, is you. that kind of where you like to be is like around 9 10 11 i i feel like 10 is a good number um of course i would love to be lower but mm -hmm. that requires practice. Yeah. And I have not been practicing lately and it reflects. Well, hello. It's been abnormally freezing oh, out in Phoenix. I can't stand it. It's like, re Oh God, I hate it. I hate when. it. And, and you know what? Half the country is rolling their eyes at us, but I don't care. No, we are care. wussies. <laughs> we are. Well, we're like 15 degrees below average right now. Yeah. Is I mean, that really? Yeah. Yes. It's, Awful. I think it's contributing to the aches and pains as well. Could be. Mm -hmm. Now, Leslie, you go to yoga, what, almost a couple times a week at least, right? Probably four, at least four times a week, I'll go to hot yoga. How does that help your golf game? It helps immensely. Yeah. Um, with my core and my lower back. So, so when you're walking 18 holes, do you, does your lower back tense up at all? Like, cause usually even for me, when I'm walking around hole 15, 16, like things are getting tight. Back is getting tight. Not actually not really. Yeah. I bet um, hot yoga really helps with it, that. It really does a lot. Um, how that, long have you been doing that pretty consistently for a while? For two years, actually it was two years at the beginning of February. And, um, I went and saw a back surgeon. And um, he said, if I do surgery, you're going to have rods in your back. Oh. And I think I looked like I was going to pass out. <laughs> and he goes, go try yoga or Pilates. Just He goes, you have to get your core tighter. Mm -hmm. So as a matter of fact, um, I'm going to PT right now for my right hip because I had that replaced like four years ago. So your right longer. hip is the one that got replaced? Yes. And it's hurting again? It's really tight, yeah. And so they did an eval. Tim Spooner did it on me uh -huh. and 
it's just really tight. So um, this morning, actually, they went in and did dry needling. Ooh. I don't know if you've had that done. Several times. Oh, really? really? On your neck? Little, my neck, a my back. Um, every, I've probably had it done just about everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So this will sound dumb. What's the difference between that and um, acupuncture. acupuncture? Yeah. Well, they go directly into the muscle Oof. with this dry needling and then they can and add cramps. stem it, and then they can add stem to it to make the muscle, like muscle contract. contract. So when they insert the needle, it's like a deep cramp. And then after they've done that, then they put the stem on there and I just sit there for five minutes and you can just feel it pulsating. And then it, that is meant, they do that so that your muscle releases and, and is not tense anymore. Yeah. Like it loosens it up. Yes. So yeah. I think PT and just, you know, like Kim has been talking about on her episodes, doing all this fitness. If we want to keep moving and playing, I think we're going to be doing it the rest of our lives. And that's okay. And it's and just part of taking care of yourself. With like your fitness the last few years, I've watched mm -hmm. you. You know, she gets up in the morning, gets all that done, but look at her flexibility and look, and she's injury free. We never hear Tori complaining that she has an injury yeah. and it's cause you're moving ev like almost every yeah. day. Yeah. Well, and, and she's young. Yeah. I was going to say that's that. That's true. That does contribute. So, we are kind of old. <laughs> but Leslie, I want to get, do you mind if I ask you, Leslie, how old you were when you got your hip replaced? Well, it's too late. I just asked you. I think I was 50. Two and what was pain. happening? Because I think that this is frequent among among female golfers where they have hip pain. Uh, um, it was just like I would be standing there and I just kind of move slightly and it would just do this pop click and oh. it was super painful. Yeah, and it would it would do it all day long. And how long did it take you to finally realize? Okay, I got to go in and see the doctor. Okay, I need to get this thing replaced. I went and saw a doctor and then I waited about another year and almost mm -hmm. a half because mm -hmm. I until it got like where it was really, really daily, mm -hmm. you know, I kind of, it was kind of like here and there. And then I waited for it to get daily and then I said, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Go and, ahead. And what was the recovery process like? Not bad. And PT for a couple months. Hips are easy. I hear hips are easier than knees, which yes. you had both and knees. knees yes. And knees are easier than shoulders. Yeah. Did you have both knees done at the same time? I did. And I was 50. Two or fifty-three so when I had it done. Age. That so was a, that's, that's a big breakdown time. Yeah, that's a big commitment, both for for Pat. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> she told the doctor that he had to put me away for a few days. <laughs> about ten, I went to a rehab hospital, which was to me kind of a a joke. I mean, I understand why she wanted that because it would have been hard for her, but. I already had a physical therapist, so we didn't do a lot of physical therapy type stuff. They did some occupational things where can you change the litter box? Can you reach for glass? You know, things that I do at home, mm -hmm. but they didn't do a lot of therapy just because I had a physical therapist already. Yeah. It was just to get me out of the house. Yeah. Leslie, so now you're going back to the doctor or back to the PT. And with your right hip hurting again, are mm -hmm. you worried that you're going to have, like, is it just. No, this is like, I'm going to get this thing completely loosened up and then yeah. I've got all these exercises and I've just got to keep doing them and strengthening because I'm playing a lot of tennis again and I'm for those of my you, body. <laughs> for those of you who don't know Leslie, Leslie goes nonstop from the second she wakes up to the second she goes to bed. I mean, it is like play 18 holes, go play some tennis, maybe some pickleball. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go play poker tonight. Sounds like somebody oh, yes. else I know. Oh no, that if you're implying me, that is not me. Well, like you're not doing activities all the time, but you are on the go all the time. Now so, me, <laughs> I sit in my chair when I'm not playing golf. Yeah, but a little behind the scenes, after four o'clock in the afternoon, unless I'm doing something, like unless I have an appointment or a meeting, whatever, I'm shutting down. Four o'clock, shut down. And that's you guys, good. sorry to like um, go off track, but did you know today is the day that uh, Full Swing comes out on Netflix? Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, I just saw that so advertised. I'll have to look it up. Do you, are you a Netflix Date subscriber? Night. Well, I am because we have T-Mobile and with T-Mobile, you get Netflix for free. Oh, my God. <laughs> we didn't even know we were advertising T-Mobile today. And boom, we just did. <laughs> so, Ashley, call T-Mobile promptly. Okay, Stop. wait. So. And so anyways, that comes out today. So we're going to have to watch. But what's today. it really about? I mean, 
they follow the it's just like the F1 show. I don't know if you've watched the F1 show, but it's just it's cool behind the scenes documentary of all these all these PGA players. Cool. And and this was last year, so they got a lot of, you know, all the live tour stuff and all that. So it will be interesting. Well, it's going to be really I can't good. Wait. I'm excited. Uh all right, well, let's get into it. So, member guests it is a thankless job <laughs> running them, just like being on a WGA board, which actually we're going to one day, maybe next time you're on, Kim, we'll go over like what it's like to be on a WGA board, like all the different positions. Leslie, you are just the president of the Papago WGA board. Thanks to Doris Thompson. Where, who just like nominated you? No, she was she, like, you're next. She was there. She helped with anything and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and Actually, you've been president of the Papago WGA, and I'm sure of- Well, I don't know if I was president or if Pat was, but I was there. But yeah. I was president of Dobson and- Yeah. So part of being a part of these ladies' leagues is there's the WGA board. You know, they kind of oversee everything that goes on in these lady league, ladies' leagues. And then there's volunteers, or we call them chair people, chair persons, people that take on these events, member guest member guest invitationals, one day guest days, all these things. So when you're put in this position, because a lot of times you're, especially the first time doing it, you have no idea what to do, where to go. Uh, sometimes there's notes, you'll be given like a binder from the last uh, group of chair people that do it. But I thought that maybe today we can just go step by step on all <clears throat> the things you have to decide on and things that come up and and just kind of see what what it's all about. Because Kim, how many member guests have you chaired before? Well, really, only the Gold Rush for about four years, but which is one of the best tournaments well, in the it's, valley. You know, it's a three dayer. It's one hundred and twenty mm -hmm. players, and so there's a lot to do. Yeah. So, and then Leslie, you've done the White Mountain Invitational. I only twice. Did it. No, I only did it once. You only did it once. Yeah. But we are frequent players, so oh, we also yes, we are. know what we like. We are excellent participants. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go through it. So first, if um, when you're taking this on, you kind of have to decide on, okay, is this a one day event, two days, three days? So Kim, what do you prefer? I prefer three days myself. I mean, the one dayers are basically really member guests where a member just invites a guest to play. Yeah. Whereas like a three day is an invitational and more substantial tournament. More substantial. Yeah. How about you, Leslie? Well, I love to play in a three day. Yeah, absolutely. You don't see them around as much. I, I feel like two days are becoming more popular. Do you see that, Kim? Well, I don't know if there are. I don't. Well, I do play in some two days. That's not true. I go mm -hmm. to Colorado and play in a couple up mm -hmm. there. But um, I feel like most of them here are three days yeah. at most of our clubs, mm -hmm. the big ones. Mm -hmm. So then you have to figure out. So once you figure out how many days, which is usually pretty, it's already predetermined, you figure out what the format will be. Well, I think you got to take, I think you got to do something else. Okay. You figure out how many days and then you got to make sure that the days that you want are available mm -hmm. yeah. with the pro shop. So you get that all scheduled in. And then I think the next thing that's the most important is to know what your budget is. Yes. Because then your budget's going to determine how many spots you're going to pay, what the entry fee is going to be, you know, how much you're going to pay for the meals mm -hmm. and all that. So I think you have to have a, a good budget. And how much, so the, there's going to be an entry fee. Let's just call it right now, $500. Okay. For a couple, for two or just one? For a three-day tournament, three-day invitational. For one person? No, for the team. Oh, okay. For a partner event. So we're going to, we're just talking partner events today. This is not any individual. So let's say the entry fee is $500 but then you might also have a budget within your WGA that's maybe giving you an extra 2000 possibly and usually all of that money the entry fee and that that uh contribution from the WGA goes towards all your expenses should cover everything that you're you're doing it should unless you have a club that likes to raise extra money yeah 
And that's, we're going to get into like how to raise extra money if you want to enhance the experience as far as sponsorships, raffles, 50, 50. Cause again, I mean, everything is very expensive, Ugh. you know, like people. Well, and then if you're Tori and Loretta and you have these, <laughs> um, expectations of how you want your tournament to turn out <laughs> and how freaking cool you want it to be. You kick money in yourself. Yes. <laughs> we have been known. Loretta and I have run a tournament here it, and there. That's why they're so freaking good. <laughs> but that is very frowned upon, though, to contribute your own funds. But sometimes it's just hard not to. Right. What I used to do necessary. is I would go buy donuts every morning uh -huh. for my volunteers or the pro shop staff, um, things like that. You know, To just, kind of bribe them to... You know, just puts a smile on their face. Realize that they're needed and appreciated. So, okay, so you have to check with the pro shop on on uh, schedule wise what days it's going to be. Usually, again, if you're a part of a club, uh, these days are usually predetermined. Um, but let's just say you're having, um, you know, you you're holding a tournament just like I do at Desert Classic at Papago, and I can go to any golf course I want. You definitely have to reach out to whoever's in charge and see what days are actually available and know that the price per day is going to change depending on what day of the week that is. So, and what time of the year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, because your Desert Classic is right in the middle. Well, same with Gold Rush, but that's different because mm -hmm. the Gold Rush is at a private club, so they're expecting to have those days off. Mm -hmm. When you go to a public golf course, that's a whole different ball game because they're going to charge you more for mm -hmm. one, because they're thinking, well, I'm losing out on public play for three days. Mm -hmm. Where they're able to charge maximum Way more. amount. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they're not out there to do you a ton of favors. That's for sure. No, they're out there to make money. Just yeah, and that's plain fine. and simple. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a little sidetracked, but do you, Typically, women's events are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe Thursday. These are a Thursday here and here and there, but typically they're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Do you does it bother you that they're never on the weekends when typically men's tournaments are? No, not for me because I'm retired, <laughs> but I do understand about people who are still working that then have to take days off. It would be nice every once in a while. Like the AGA has gone to having some women's tournaments on the weekends, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is nice for those people who are still working. Mm -hmm. Leslie, how about you? Would it be weird if I, all of a sudden the women's invitationals and tournaments were all of a sudden on Saturday, Sunday or Friday, Saturday and Sunday? Yeah, I, I would not like that. Really? No, I, I love that they're Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Because on the weekends, you're usually doing other things. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good take. Hot take. Yeah. Less. Yeah. I really don't play any golf on weekends usually. I don't either. I mean, I'm definitely usually playing um, during the week. Mm -hmm. And the courses yeah. are busier. They're slower. I mm -hmm. just, I, I love playing during the week. Yeah. That's maybe your tennis days. We play on weekends all the time. Yeah. Well, you're like the mayor, Kim. I mean, you're out there on the first tee. <laughs> no, I don't get the first tee. You know, Pat has to call in every morning. Oh, get online every morning at seven o'clock to try and get oh. us a tee time a week in advance. Okay, so let's talk about formats. So in partner events, you can have a stroke play format or you can do match play, which is typically nine hole matches. See, and personally, I don't like the nine hole I matches. I don't either. Leslie, do you like the nine hole matches? With my handicap, yes, I do. Yes. Even see, though Tori see, and I won I know, nine hole matches. But you guys that are really low handicappers, I know you do not like nine hole it's matches. Tough. But the time and I can that, see why. The time but that Kim and I won. Yeah. The time Kim and I won, Kim was a zero and I was a ten. And so it was perfect because there's a ten stroke differential and that's really how you kind of work the system. Yes. It was fun. That She's was fun. never invited me back since. <laughs> <laughs> that is not entirely true. Your club championship went over the dates many times. I know, I and know. that just, became, do you know it's club championship week this week? Oh, it me? is? <gasps> oh, Tori. For who? For me. Yikes. At What's Arizona? The, when yeah. is the first day? Well, tomorrow is the stroke play just to decide seating. Okay. And then, but it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, how exciting. Wow. No, Les, it's annoying. Why? Is that 13 year old <gasps> there again? Wait. Yep. The, well, now she's 14 and she actually could be 15. Let's just say 14 ish. 
She's playing. She's now a plus three. So she's very wow. good. Okay. Love that. But Tori? Yeah. You can beat her. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> and what's the first thing you're going to say when you wake up that morning? I can win. <laughs> wait, That's wait, right. wait, wait. I am going to win. Kim just got really mad at me right there. You That was forceful. Okay. Well, behind that's scenes, because Kim, I know how you think sometimes. And behind the scenes, Kim, we walked into the studio today and Kim's like, I have a very bad headache. So luckily, Kim, Leslie and I are here to pep her up. <laughs> She's but smiling I that, too. I think that <laughs> statement where she just pointed her finger at me just snapped her out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's actually other um, uh, women that are signed up that are really good competition too. So Molly um, playing? She is not. She's out of town. But... Uh, uh, friend Aaron and Bailey, Alex. they're playing and Alex is playing. So there's, good. The, you know, I'm hoping to get to the finals, but there's some good competition this year. So other than the high schooler. Can us non-members come by and yes, walk? Yes, you, can. you can. I mean, don't let them tell you not. Okay. I like okay. that. So, um, well, if you're in the finals, on, well, I think I'm playing golf on Sunday. That's and I'm that's going okay, to the dunes. Kim. Oh, you are going with them? With your husband. Oh, <laughs> Leslie is off to the dunes with my husband. The dunes. Day. Yes. Like uh, this. What do you. Bandon dunes? dunes? No. Oh. Like the sand dunes. The sand dunes. Yeah. My, I'm going with my husband and her husband's coming with us. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking our Can-Ams. So he doesn't even want to watch you play. Listen, in, in his defense, he has watched every club <laughs> championship from the beginning of time. Okay. So we, he can take one year off. Okay. She's so, a good woman. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, back to our subject. So formats. So yes, I am not particularly a fan of nine hole matches, but I know that the majority of women do love that format. So okay, can I say one thing? Yeah, I loved at our tournament. We don't do it any longer. Now we do the nine hole match play, Mm -hmm. which like every club does it. So I think I'm kind of over it as Mm -hmm. well. I love the different formats. And I really liked when we did um, the closing day, um, what's the one where it's your true handicap? Uh, like quota? Quota. Oh, I yeah. love quota. Like combined quota. Yes. Because yes. that like really, that. You can come from last place teller. to first place. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's like an aggregate too, yeah, you know, where pretty both much. scores count the last day. And Do you yeah. like that, Kim, having an aggregate on the last day? I mean, it's something to play for. Let's say you're in third or fourth place. And I mean. Well, yeah, anything, anything can, can happen. happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just like um, oh, an eclectic, you know, yeah. it doesn't really matter what you do the first day. Yeah. It's yeah. what happens the second day that counts. You know, and I didn't write down eclectic. That's a really fun format too. When, when you have partners. But know. that's the whole tournament has to, like, that's a two day tournament yeah. where that's the only format. Yeah, exactly. And that can only really be two days. It's so fun. for these three day tournaments, I'm with Leslie where I, I do like, there's uh, Mesa Country Club did it, and we did it White Mountain at one point where it was scramble, best ball, combined mm-hmm. quota. Exactly. So I I personally love that because, I don't know, it's you're dependent on you and your partner, and that's it. Whereas in match play, you could play against a team on a nine-hole match, and they could be playing lights out, and you can't do anything. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything for that nine holes. And that could be their best nine holes that they play. It's like luck of the draw. I'm playing against them during their best nine holes of the entire tournament. And I just gave up six points, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, Alta Mesa does, um, well this year, or maybe they did it last year. I don't know, because I was banned last year, so I didn't get to play. Oh my God. Bad girl. (laughs) I was a bad girl. And you know, we're going to get into um, betting, which maybe that's where- Well, no, that's not- I love betting. um, I was talking about, (laughs) they changed the format last year and they call it now a Bell knob scramble. Oh yeah, explain that one because I thought that was interesting. Well, I guess both people hit their drive, mm-hmm. and then you pick the best drive that you want to hit. So, say you and I are playing as a partner, mm-hmm. and we take your drive. That means I have to hit it. We alternate until we get on the putting green, and then both can putt. Oh yeah, then it goes back into a scramble format. Wow. Yeah, that it was a little complicated. Do you, um, are they doing it again this year? They are. Oh. oh. That's one of those formats, just like modified Chapman, where you are constantly like 
having to, to think. think about, okay, am I hitting this ball? Are you hitting this ball? That's easy. What Hit, switch, doing? and bitch. Yeah. Modified chip. <laughs> That's a fun one too, though. So part of, again, running these member guests is, is figuring out, okay, is it one day, two day, three days? Okay. It's three days. What's the format going to be? Now, a lot of times at these clubs, they have traditional formats that they've been doing for years. But just know, if you do want to switch it up, you can go to the board and say, hey, we've been doing nine hole matches for a couple of years now. Can we, as chair people, suggest that we switch it up this year and we do this format and see how it goes? And sometimes the board's like, yeah, sure. And they vote on it and they can switch up the format. Or there are other boards that believe in well, this is how we've always done it. This is tradition. Yes. Mm-hmm. You do hear that a lot in golf. You do hear in that particular. Often. Yeah. Like this is the way it's always been done. And that's unfortunate. It's but very unfortunate. I encourage change, you know? Well, and, even and to give it a shot, try it once and see how it goes. And if it doesn't, if you don't like it, then mm-hmm. go back the next year. Exactly. But. So uh, another thing you can think about as far as formats are concerned are horse races. So I get the question a lot. What is a horse race? Because I do a lot of content on Instagram when I'm in a horse race because it's so easy. I mean, I love going up to the competitors and talking to them. So much fun. It's so much fun. And there's a way you can do a, a horse race at the end of a tournament with all the flight winners. And then you can do a horse race like just a random one within the tournament that has nothing to do with the actual tournament, but it's like a separate a separate game. So Kim, will you explain what a horse race actually is? A horse race is basically, you know, they have so many teams. Now, usually they let the teams volunteer. Do you want to play in the horse race? It's something extra. And they might charge you $10 a person extra. Mm -hmm. So it's what we call a strict alternate shot. So, and they pick maybe four holes depending on how many teams because they eliminate so many teams on each hole. Mm -hmm. And so if you and I are playing and you tee off, then I have to hit the next shot and we alternate in. If you're the last one to putt, then I have to tee off on the next hole. And it's just a strict alternate shot. And then so, but the the kicker about it is that everyone is going at once. Correct. So you might have, you know. 10 teams. Yeah. 10, 20 teams teeing off and going, doing this on the same hole with the rest of the field watching you. Right. Sometimes. Yeah. Like in Alta Mesa though, they have it different flights. And so they have like five different horse races going on. Really? Yeah. At the golf course. And that's when it's more of an optional extra game. But in this scenario where it's all the flight winners from the tournament and we're, we're figuring out an overall winner, that's when the entire rest of the tournament is watching you at the same time. And Leslie, they're getting pops too. Oh yeah. They're, it's getting, still net. And that's so, tough. It is tough, especially against you guys. And you've been in plenty of horse races. Well, both of you have, but Leslie, do you get nervous or? Oh my gosh. Yes. It is a different so fun. type of nervous. <laughs> like, do you get excited about being in a horse race or oh, yeah. are you one of those that are like, oh, I didn't get in the horse race, but I'm glad because oh, that no, is I'm torture. Pissed. I'm pissed if I didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It is fun. And it's, it's so fun, fun if you can get people, I don't want to say harassing all the other players, but yeah. you know, like kind of music going loud, throwing digs out and, yeah. and stuff like that. That's but, when it's fun. But sometimes people... Well, it is or meant a little to be too serious when yeah. it's really quiet. Like I don't like it then. Yeah. Like I like it when it's the party atmosphere. It's a peppy, and, and sometimes they have the bar card out there, mm-hmm. and they're encouraging you know more. So at White Mountain, the last year we did the horse race the day before the tournament started was the year Kelly and I did it. Oh yes, and then they haven't. They quit doing it after that, which I was a little sad because I loved doing that on Sunday. Yeah. So if you use it as an extra game that has nothing to do with the tournament, but it's just kind of like an extra feature, mm-hmm. then everyone can participate, and people come in early. And yeah. It kind of starts the tournament early. It's an icebreaker, and that's yeah. kind of what they do at Gold Rush. It's after uh, it's the first after round. after the first round. It it tends to be a long day though. Yeah, and actually, that's why I always opt out. Oh. <laughs> We're not doing the horse race. I'm sorry. I am a party pooper. Yes, you are. Well, she has to be home by four, we just found out. (laughs) One of the things about these three-day tournaments, though, is that because sometimes sometimes they're three and a half days because you come in the day before, you're playing practice on whatever. I mean, it's a lot. It's exhausting. It is a lot. So, and they take up a lot of time. So, I 
yeah, I'm a party pooper when it comes. But horse races are fun. Horse Do you ever get nervous anymore with horse races? No, not horse races. No. Well, when do you get nervous? What would actually make you nervous at this point? The U.S. Women's Senior Open. Ooh. With a three-foot putt? Well, no, even teeing off on the first tee when you have really? like Judy Rankin or um, who was the other person? Maybe Nancy Lopez announcing you on the first tee. Yeah, that would make you. Okay, so are you going to try and qualify for that this year? I am. Where is the qualifier? The qualifier is at Papago. Oh, oh wow. Can you imagine if Kim is packing to be your caddy? That's exciting. Well, I know my way around the pap. Actually, we'll have to discuss this because, you know, Pat probably can't walk 18 holes and you have to walk. Oh. Whereas I get a card because I have the medical exemption through the USGA. So that tends to. Um, but your caddy's not allowed to be with you in the cart? No. No, it's only no. it's the one. Bottle. Well, that's not necessarily <laughs> true. In Arizona, if the temperature is like over 100 degrees, they let the caddies have a cart. Mm. But we wouldn't be in the same cart. Oh, really? That's she would have her own cart. Yeah. Hmm. But at the actual tournament, she would have to walk. Hmm. And I don't know if she can do that or if they would. She got a medical exemption last year for the USGA Senior Am because of her back was so bad. But it's a lot better now. I just don't know if she could still walk mm -hmm. 18 holes. But we'll talk later. Okay. Well, if you need me, you know where to find me. Because that's very exciting. Where's the actual open? Waverly Country Club in oh, Portland. So you've played that before. I have, and I would love to go back because I was there in 1981 for the Women's U.S. Amateur. Mm -hmm. I was there in, wow. let's see, this is 23, maybe 19. Yeah, Molly was there too. For the U.S. Senior Women's Amateur. And then if I qualified this year, it would be the U.S. Senior Women's Open. I love it. Let's make that happen. Wow. Let's put that out there. I'm going to try. Give me a goal of mine one day. Yes. How old are you, Leslie? 57. Just can a we youngster. Make, can we make Leslie start to play in these qualifiers, too? I mean, maybe not the open, but at least the amateur, for heaven's sake. Not the amateur, the senior amateur. The senior amateur, yeah. I am a senior. Right. And I think you should try and qualify for the senior it's amateur. It's only one round. You never know. And this year, it's in Scottsdale. Oh, like the actual championship. The actual championship is at Troon Country Club. Wow. And the qualifier is August now. 31st. You have until August 31st. For the qualifier? For the qualifier, which is, I think is at Pinnacle Peak Country Club again. Really? Be ready. I'm ready. I'm August right. it's, already in my, it's already in my calendar. Hmm. Okay, so moving on. So I, my next note is determining how much is registration. So you mentioned it earlier as far as getting your budget in line. So you really want to list out where, how much everything is costing. A lot of times when you're at these country clubs in particular, the use of the course is free, free, but there's going to be costs for the carts and maybe even range balls. Sometimes I don't know. Not so much range balls, but definitely they'll charge you a cart fee. They'll mm -hmm. charge cart fee. Uh, there's going to be fees for tea gifts, for prizes, um, food. food. I mean, all sorts of things. So once you get that budget together and then you divide it by however many participants. Food I mean, is probably the biggest expense. So yeah, it is. And we're going to get into Especially food because it's tough. Days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, making that budget and then determining how much the registration is. Again, this is also kind of a traditional thing. It's tough when you have to, you know, start realistically looking at increasing prices. I mean, it just. Well, they've all gone up this year. I can tell you from looking at the entry fees that I have paid already or that I'm getting ready to pay, they've all gone up. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not surprised by. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when Alta Mesa was, what, 250 a person, so mm -hmm. 500 a team, and now it's 675 maybe or yeah. something. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, even if you look at Forest Highlands, I think they're almost cl close to $1,000 a team. I mean, it's becoming, I think that the bottom level of invitational costs is probably 550 at this point for three days. Well, I can tell it's you, even Desert penny, Mountain, yeah, even is. Desert Mountain, I've played in that a couple of times. I've never paid though, thank God, because I probably <laughs> wouldn't. I'm again, I'm cheap, you guys. Uh, we'll just get out. I, you know, there's too many other things that I want to do. 
than spend a lot of money in an invitational. But if someone wants to pay my way, I'll be more than happy to go. And you most likely will get a win. But so like been, Desert Mountain, it was yeah. like four or five years ago, it was like 400 and some dollars a person. Yeah. Oh, that was four or five years ago? Wow. Yes. But one of the things, and I think this is a good point, is you could drink all the alcohol you want, mm. which is unusual for a women's tournament. Mm-hmm. I mean, men's tournaments do that, but I think that's a bad a bad thing because you have people that don't drink at all. Mm -hmm. And then you have people who drink a lot. And I just think, you know, people should buy their own alcohol. Like meaning the, the fee is so high because I am paying for so-and-so's right to drink whatever they want. And I don't drink. I remember the first time at desert mountain, the cart girl, you could go around and you could have any alcohol you want. And people were putting bottles in their bag. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I just lot. don't, I, I think you're encouraging drinking. So, yeah. And I don't think that's what these invitationals are all about. Yeah. I think some people will disagree with you. Well, I'm not, I'm not one of them. No, I'm sure there are. I mean, you know, it's different like Tori's events. Yeah. Um, you know, those women know what they're paying for when they come. And, and you know, DeZante Bay was great and people were having a good time, but that was all included in the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that didn't affect her. Yeah. But women, I I personally don't drink alcohol, but most of my friends like to drink. (laughs) Yeah. But I think that they more are excited to compete. Uh, Yes. And and they're not really looking to get trashed. Yeah. But they do like their cocktails. You know what I mean? Like they want want like maybe two, Yeah, maybe three, but, but they're not like getting wrecked. Yeah. But uh, they really, they, they look forward to, then they can pay for them. Yeah. And they usually are fine with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I, I mean, I don't mind the drinking. I just think that for an invitational like this, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's going to deter anybody from not coming because alcohol is not involved. Well, yeah. I agree with that. I agree. And a lot of times when you're talking to the catering staff, because you're working with the catering staff to set a menu. So you work with the pro shop to set everything uh, up it's with the golf logistics. tournaments. Yep. And then you go to the catering department to discuss what the menu is for each meal. The catering department, a lot of times too, will throw in like a glass of wine when you enter or, you know, like they'll serve one white and one red at the meal for like that. That's their complimentary thing or they include it cheap. So or if you have a theme, they'll do a cocktail. Exactly. Like theme. a drink of the day. Yeah. So keep that in mind. Okay. How about opening up registration, Kim? How far in advance should you be opening up registration? It could vary, obviously, but what's typical? At least a couple months. Like two months? Like if you're doing a tournament in March, January 1st. Yeah. So let's say three months. And the reason that it should be three months ahead of time is because, again, you know, if you sell it out, you kind of get to get working on it quicker. Well, and if people are flying in, then it gives them enough time to make their plans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if your tea gift has something uh, specialized on it or, or unique, you know, it gives you time to, to do that. How about um, closing it up? Um, Probably I would say at least three weeks or more before the tournament, because then, you know, then you wait for the day that you're going to pick the hand, you know, you say in advance, we're going to use, if the tournament is late March 21st and you say, we're going to use March 7th mm-hmm. handicaps. That way you can start to do all your pairings and flights and. Yeah. And that's an important note too. So you always have that deadline or that, that date that you're going to use your handicap. Cause now in the system, you can pick whatever date you want, but typically it's about a week ahead of time with these net events. And after you're, you have grabbed all the handicaps on that date, then you can move forward with flights and pairings and all of that. So there's a lot of work involved after that date. And personally, I really think you should do gross and net. Yeah, I agree with that. Too. Um, a lot of clubs, are, I mean, our invitational at Apache Wells, which is just a one day thing, is strictly net. I'm totally against that and I won't play. Yeah. And it's not because I don't think I can win at net. I can and I have, mm-hmm. but it's just not. Why would you want to do net? 
when probably the six, say you have 12 teams in a flight, the low six are going to have the most chance of winning. Mm -hmm. Whereas the top of the flight is not. But if you do gross and net, then the top of the flight has a chance. The bottom of the flight has a chance. And the middle people, you never know where, which way they're going to go. Exactly. exactly. I, I agree with you. And um, I, I, yeah. I like that when they do the gross and the net. And I, cause I feel like for you guys, it gives you, it gives you something to play for really mm -hmm. hard. And, and another way you can go around it too, is just have one overall low gross prize. So that's something at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as, I mean, even if you have a token, a token one, you know, mm -hmm. one low gross in each flight or whatever, but <laughs> you know what? Sorry. <laughs> Ashley just walked in the studio and to say that she's not, she tried to tiptoe in and not interrupt us would be a complete fucking lie. Okay. She's dancing. <laughs> she's, she's here to see Leslie and Kim, but she hasn't seen Leslie in a while. She's excited. She We're hasn't excited. seen me in a while either. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> Can we talk about the uh, bottle challenge? We did it in Sante Bay with the bottle on the thing. You know what? I think you had to be there. You had to be there. You had to be there. The other thing with doing gross and net is people think, well, you can't have any fun if you're doing gross or it's yeah. too hard. What are you talking about? That's the easiest format to do is low gross. Well, and everything is still flighted. So yeah. you're still just competing against the people in your flight. So one thing we didn't touch on at all, which is terrible of us is themes. Mm. So a lot of these big invitationals have themes. Okay. I could already tell Kim, uh, doesn't give a shit about themes. Okay. Well, Leslie, do you want to share what your theme was when you chaired the white mountain invitation? It was a no brainer. It was the Olympics that year. <laughs> so it was a year of the summer Olympics. So you just used the Olympics as the theme. 100%. And actually red, white, and blue, my favorite. Yep. And you incorporated it throughout the tournament in just different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, I go 50, 50 with themes because I do think it's fun, but I also think it can, be a uh, cash cow too, like uh, decorations. And, you know, it's time consuming. And, and like, for instance, the White Mountain Invitational now is um, they're doing the carnival theme again. Mm -hmm. And so I remember playing the practice round last year and we had Tracy Spooner running into the restroom to decorate the restrooms while we were playing our practice round. And you, th you think to yourself like, is that necessary? Like, do we have to decorate everything? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lot. I agree. It's a lot. And it costs money. Well, I don't say decorate, but I think the restroom should maybe have some products in there <laughs> for the women. You know what? She goes, no themes, but she well, is no, requesting I think there should, bathroom products. I'm a little disappointed when I go into a ladies' restroom at a country club and they do not have certain products available for us to use. <laughs> I mean, oh Desante Bay was- it's, it's like dry shampoo. I want to take my hat off and I want to throw a little dry shampoo and- Wow. Fluff it up. <laughs> Does that really work? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. I love, I love, I love a dry, dry shampoo. shampoo. Batiste, it's from, you get it at never, CBS. Never Best tried it. Best stuff in the world. Never tried it. But Desante Bay, I loved the chapstick <laughs> that they, they gave us. They gave us Bliss Tech. I don't think that was compliments like, of Tori. No, that was Stevie. That was all oh. Desante Bay, but that is so funny. You, you well, just, we came home with about 15 of them because that's what I use all the time. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Ashley says it's our, it was on our book. Kim. Someone <laughs> paid that. for it, Kim. <laughs> she whips it out. <laughs> <laughs> so has there been any themes that you've really liked leslie like that you can remember that you oh. i mean there's always questions like what are what is a good theme for uh invitational like women are asking in chat rooms like because they want to be unique i mean you see casino themes uh loretta and i did a rock and roll theme for years that might have been my favorite quite honestly i do like a rock and it, roll theme and that's probably easy. my favorite yeah we could T-shirts, you know, you wear yeah. matching bands. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. I really liked the rock and roll. What are some other themes that you've you've experienced, Kim? Well, like the gold rush is maybe a theme, but what they do there is like for the uh, closest to the pins, mm -hmm. they give the gold dollars out. Oh, that's yeah. nice. So you get that's a good idea. 25 gold mm -hmm. dollars out. Mm -hmm. And yes, everything, all the decorations are gold and, yeah. and all that, but. But it's the same. That's another thing that helps, though. It's the same theme every year. So you so can you're not reuse investing a lot of it. on different. Mm -hmm. And Arizona Country Club does the same thing now, too, where it's the spring fling. And every year, that's just the theme spring. 
springtime, however you want to interpret it as the as the chair people, whether it's flowers or spring break, that's kind of the themes you can easy. reuse things, you know. But you actually brought up a good point, which is on course competitions. So that's one thing at Desert Classic and any tournament I run, to be honest, I I don't do closest to the pins or longest drives or any of that. Well, you don't see longest drives much anymore because usually there's only a couple people who are probably going to win the longest drive, but the closest to the pins, anybody can get that. I know. But the other thing I like too is the day money, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the way they do it is like at the gold rush, there's 12 teams in a flight. So, so one team each day will get either low net or low gross for the day, but you can't, you can only win it once. So they're right there. There are six teams I like that. that are going to win something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for DC, for example, and Gold Rush, that's included in your entry fee. Entry fee. So you're not asking for money again. It, it was already in your registration fee. You've already paid. Did you guys do that? Yeah. Yeah, we did at Desert I Classic. You did. Yep. Yeah. We did at Desert Classic. We're doing it again. So it's already included. And then we do first place gross, first place net, and each flight each day. And again, like you Tim did said, Sante Bay too. Uh huh. And if you good. won, you just can't win again. So it's an easy way to pick up some cash. Well, and to let everybody have a chance because someone, a team may play really good one day and mm -hmm. win something, but not play good enough in the whole tournament to fit, you know, place. Exactly. Okay. So why don't we finish the betting conversation off? So paramutual, I am one to like paramutual is really fun. And I remember when I first started getting into playing invitationals, I thought it was so much fun. I would like give them all my money, bet on all the teams. This is when you bet on individual teams to win place or show. I have since kind of moved past it because I don't feel like women bet enough money to make it worthwhile. And even if your team wins and you placed a bet on it, Usually you're walking away with maybe what you bet, not much more. So I've kind of moved past the whole paramutual thing. How do you guys feel about it? To me, it's like, I don't know enough about players in all the other flights mm -hmm. to bet on. I mean, it's like a crapshoot. Oh yeah, look at their handicaps. Well, you know, let's just give it a shot. Yeah. Personally, I don't waste my money on paramutuals. I mean, I might bet on myself, yeah. Yeah. but that's probably going to be the only person I bet on. Yeah. And again, even if you do know most of the field, it is fun. Mm -hmm. But I, again, like when was the last time you walked away and you were like, I, I just I want. Actually, I love the fact that the day money took over the paramutual yeah. betting. Because yeah. initially when I first started playing tournaments, it was, it was a lot of paramutual betting. And now I've noticed it's gone to the day money. And, and mm, you really I need like to it. have someone who knows what they're doing in the paramutual betting. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of work. It's on the yeah. back and the back end of it. It's a lot of work. And I, uh, Molly and I used to do it for the men's tournaments and during the summer and it's fun. But again, we were like, we had to be there the you entire week. Yeah. We had to be it's there stressful. the entire weekend where you sold the bets and then you had to, we you know, have to go help. Yeah. <laughs> it was, <laughs> she had to drag yeah, us in there too. <laughs> exactly. And then you have to pay out at the end and you have to do it quickly because mm -hmm. everyone's taken off. It is, a, it's a lot of work. So if you do take that on as a tournament chair, just know you need to find someone that knows what they're doing. Uh, maybe that is the pro shop too. Cause a lot of times the pro shop takes care of it all. And they don't have enough to do. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> seriously. So, <laughs> I mean, that's why I got banned from the gold <laughs> rush because of the paramutual. <laughs> She did. Oh she my got man. She might have told them that they were doing it the wrong fucking way. Oh, yeah. happy. Yeah. <laughs> Only the one person, though. Yeah, but that one person uh, didn't care. She said that was Kim being Kim. But the story got. Oh, mm, oh, inflated. Inflated. There was a lot of people around when I said it. There were two people. And Kim got banned. I got. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine. Which is fine. You'll be back this year. It's your comeback year. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There's a lot of good players. There is, but that's fun. Right? Five national champions coming. Wow. Oh, the gold rush is a fun turn. Did you sign up? Mm -mm. I'm so mad at you. I don't love that course. You don't love Alta Mesa? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't. I don't really want to drive out there three days in a row. Oh, I thought you were going to say like you don't play well there. It's no, hard. No, I play, I play okay there, but I don't like, like I don't go, oh, I really want to go play three days in a row at Alta Mesa. <laughs> I don't mind the course. I don't mind the drive either. But yeah, I get it. Less, I mean, there are places I don't want to make the drive either. So, eh. 
It's okay, but I'm still mad at you. You should be playing in it. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to play in the Mesa Country Club one. Sweet, oh, sweet you nice. are? Yeah. They're not doing guest guest, are they? No. Oh, yeah, I'm guest guest. You are? Yes. Well, that's probably because they didn't have enough member guests. Who are you playing with? Sarah Johnson. Oh, my God. How you fun guys is are that? have so much fun. I'm and really I'm excited. I'm so mad because I love that tournament. Is it the same time as DC? I don't know. That's why um, well, we're off that email list. Uh, that's well, something only, where I might have gotten it's kicked all out. <laughs> I got, uh, you know, I the Sweet Swinger, when they quit doing gross. I know. I was like, still, mm. I love that course. But yeah, I got in a little confrontation there too. Anyway. Well, I have my own rule from that <laughs> golf tournament. You do? What's your rule? Well, uh, one year I brought um, a, a kid under 18. Oh, you're such an asshole for doing that. And we won. And they made a new rule saying that you no have to kids. be 18 or older because of all the gambling. Rightfully or, so. Sorry. You know what? I won't Don't even tell you who person. it was because if you heard who it was, you'd probably roll your eyes because she's a um, an Instagram bigwig. But she was oh. it Paige Sporanic? Yes, it was. No, stop. Do you have a picture of that? You and Kim Sp- or Paige Sporanic? Um, you will f- p- text Pat right now, Ashley. We need that picture. No, she wouldn't have it. Pat wouldn't have. Well, <laughs> I don't think so. No. Um, no, this is such. Do you have her phone number? Can you touch text page? I don't think so because I have no idea. I mean, no, I don't anymore. I, I feel like you might. I think we need to do a little scroll job. Like, can, can you imagine Ashley having a podcast with Kim and Paige Spranick talking about their, t- their time they played an invitational together? Stop. This is amazing. That was before she was. Yeah, big time. And she only promotes really men's stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, mm, okay. I think I see some future <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, let's get into really quick before we have to end, because we have eight minutes left. Tea gifts and prizes. What's your view on, let's do prizes first. That's easier. So typically for prizes, you're winning pro shop credit. Uh, sometimes like gift cards, Visa gift cards. Um, I mean, I've seen cash before, but that's not common. Um, or just something like a bag or something that they like a product that the chair people buy and give out as a prize. What do you guys prefer? Leslie, what do you prefer? Mm, really depends on that prize. Um, cause there's been some really tacky stuff I've received over the years. <laughs> And then there's been awesome stuff like the and MC to, Wallace bags. But to mean, defend the tacky prizes that were picked out for you, again, everything is so expensive that you know what though? Sometimes those prizes reflect whoever was running that tournament's taste. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sometimes it's just it's not in the same flow that I'm in. You, that's the nicest way anyone has ever said i don't want that shit anymore <laughs> okay that is how leslie is well trust me at the sweet swinger one year i won this i think the theme must have been safari uh-huh i won an elephant bowl <laughs> what the hell am i gonna do with an elephant bowl <laughs> like <laughs> it was given away immediately and it was this surprise that you and Paige sporanic won and walked away with Oh, no, I don't think oh, so. God, that would have been good. One year they did um, Vera Bradley, which was nice. Okay. One year they did um, Foot Joy shoes, or the overall winner, or the winner of the flight got like a rain suit. Lindsay and I love those rain suits. Those are yeah, nice. that's, and that's, you know. But I think personally, pro shop credit or gift cards. Yeah. And, and if it's a crappy pro shop, honestly, you just buy balls. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you usually can't go wrong with yeah. the pro shop credit. I don't mind pro shop credit either. I mean, I hate it. I do hate it when you go in the pro shop and there's absolutely nothing in it. Mm-hmm. Like, like just nothing in it. I'm going we'll to, I'm going to give out an example and I hate doing this, but for instance, Flagstaff Ranch, cause we were all still there, mm-hmm. just there. Pro shop was empty. There was no product. See, it's good for me because I wear men's shirts. Yeah, so, so they it's a always easier. have men's shirts in the That's pro shop. That's true. But even if the pro shop has t-shirts or sweatshirts, mm-hmm. like Tubac did when we were there, 
Like I'll, I'll buy a sweatshirt over a case of balls, you know, but when they have just nothing. But when you get your balls so out, you don't have to buy balls. Listen, All I right, always so buy balls and gloves. Gloves. Hey, Kim has always taught me that is balls and gloves money. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. So my vote is for pro shop credit. It is not glamorous. It's not, you know, but I don't. I don't like the thought of giving out cash because I feel like if someone gave me cash, what am I going to spend it on? Groceries? Womp womp. I got yelled at for that we were not allowed to give out cash. Do you want to straighten that out now, Kim? What the rule is with cash? Well, to be honest with you, I'm not really sure because I don't, you can get, if you bet that day, for example, or, you know, like if you do skins money or that, Mm -hmm. or like, um, the day money you can i think you can give day money out i don't know if you can give prize you money can, out you cannot i had to go get visas hmm. i thought is, it changed that's why i thought you could win up to a thousand dollars well oh, that's what like, you can win as an amateur but i don't think it's cash yeah because even with the men they're like for the men's aga tournaments like they're given that amount of money in bands gift cards yes. mm. we'll see and even the men's because the women don't get paid that much at the end of the year but the men's i think how much some of those guys get is totally not right because mm. it's over a thousand dollars yeah maybe, but, we'll, maybe we'll have to clarify that on a different episode but mm-hmm. but even ask- if it is available and, and allowed i still am of, of the mindset of like it could be even two hundred dollars that i won and that's going to be like Okay. It's not as exciting. I don't know why. Uh, it's not. Because yeah. I know I'm going to just spend it on something silly or, you know, like something that is just everyday stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas even if you're forced to buy a box of balls and some gloves, you walk away with something in your hand and you know that you're going to use that at some point. Okay. Yes. Finally, let's let's talk about tea gifts. Uh, this could be the most asked question in the chat rooms that I see. What uh, I'm running a member guest. Do you have any unique tea gift ideas? I have one right now that's not on this list. Okay. That um, last summer, I don't know where we were. Someone had a little portable fan. Oh, that's a good idea. And I bought one. And then someone else gave me one. And um, they're rechargeable. And like on a hot day in Arizona, just pull this little fan out. Cool now, yourself let down. me ask you a question. And, and when we played the Mid-Am last June and it was 110 degrees out and you had a wet towel on your head the entire round, did you have that fan with you that day? No, I didn't Didn't know about it then. I'm trying to think where Lisa O'Donnell had one. Where did I see it? Well, let us know, Kim. Leslie, what do you think about? Oh, you have the rechargeable hand warmer. This is my favorite thing in the world. That was uh, the hot ticket item. That it was years like ago. two years mm-hmm. ago. You got them as every tea gift. I'm shocked that you have it today, that it's hot, that you charged it up, and it has made it into your pocket on a cold weather day. I charge it every night with my cell phone. Wow. And I bring it with me. I love this thing with all my heart. No, that is such... <laughs> But of course, Leslie does that. Charges her recharge. See, something like a glove would be too hard unless you have like the rep there because mm-hmm. everybody has a different side. But I yeah. probably have gotten almost everything on here. Yeah. So for the listeners, we're looking at a list of possible tea gift I've options. I've never received alignment rods. <laughs> and, well, and I have You can see the full either. list on the, on the show notes. You can download it there, um, you know, for ideas or whatnot. But I mean, yeah, a lot of these you see a lot. Towels. I, I, mean, I think they're all great water bottles. Uh, I mean, I don't have anything against uh, a shoe bag is being donated right away for me. I I do not use shoe bags. I don't know. A flask I give away as well. Flasks I'm giving away. Shoe bags I use to keep all my glasses, sunglasses in. What? How many sunglasses do you have? I probably have Hmm. seven or eight pairs that I put in a shoe bag. Well, just it's a big shoe bag and I just throw them in, in their cases Will you get close to the microphone so that people don't miss out on your sunglass shoe bag? Well, that's what I use mine for. <laughs> um, what else do you see here that you might not use a lot? I mean, the saddle bag was on here that someone else recommended. You have a saddle bag that you use all the I time. broke. I broke it. You broke it. I mean, I get compliments on that thing all the time. So I don't know why it's so hard to find online. What's a scramble stick? I have no idea. Someone recommended that. We'll have to Google it. 
Let me Google it right now. What other things do you are on there that you? Um, well, divot repair tools. Those are all the clubs give those out practically. Yeah. Um, Scramble speaker. You know, I got a. Um, I've gotten several different speakers over the years, but this one that I got from Pins and Aces. Yeah. It's magnetic and it's a rechargeable one. And I can, so I just put it on the cart frame and then my phone's right there. And I listen to music all the time now when I play golf. Wait, it's rechargeable. I bought the what, same what? one from Allie, from Alex's and store. And it's magnetic. Yeah. You and just stick it, it on pins the and, it, pins yeah. and aces. It's a little black round. It's, it's only this big. It's cute. It's so cute. I love it. Well, guess what? Pins and Aces is going to be at our shopping night this time. So, yep. And and the speaker Are really, You got him? Time. He's coming? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I, Leslie recommends. Yeah. Now, he just came out with, um, well, I got two of his new shirts. One had the hearts on it. Uh-huh. But he came out with these heart ball markers. One says birdie. One says bogey. One says pins and aces. And the other one says fuck golf. And I thought, I'm going to have to call him and see if I can get about 10 of those just to. Oh my God. I love that. I love it. All right, ladies. So, um, again, if you're listening and you're going to be organizing a member guest, uh, you know, this spring, this upcoming summer, I know all of this stuff is on your brain right now. We didn't even get to a couple of things like sponsorships, raffles, 50, 50 entertainment, like communication, how keeping score volunteers, there's a lot going on. I totally understand. You probably feel a little overwhelmed. Um, just ask around, see, uh, ask old, uh, or people that have chaired the tournament before, ask them what they, they did, what worked, what didn't, what they wish they did better. Um, and we'll probably just have another podcast episode to follow up on this. I mean, there's a lot. And I think I'm saying this for all three of us. You could reach out to any of us anytime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks for being on the show. Leslie, welcome back. Welcome Thank back to the so hot mic. Tori. Welcome back. <laughs> Where have so you been? Fun. Well, it's just been a while. I, she oh. hasn't been in the podcast studio for a while. I mean, I probably since last April. So I think so I mean, with Alex. Oh, yeah. Kim, you were fine. Not everyone is a regular like you, Kim. I'm not a regular. It's been a month. I uh, <laughs> Kim, a whole month. Kim, I always appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. Be sure to check out the show notes for all the details on today's show. If you haven't already, please give a five-star written review on your favorite podcast platform or even screenshot this episode and send it to your golf buddies. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll catch you on the first tee in a couple days.